Hi everyone, so glad to be with you again. I hope and pray that the Lord's presence will come upon your household today. No, not that He is not there, but that you will have a greater awareness of Him at this moment. In Psalm 96 verse 4, just before we go and sing this song unto the Lord, For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Let us sing to the one who deserves to be greatly praised. His grace changes everything There's no sin too great There's no pain too deep The cross declares it is done There's no shame too Let us take the time to pray. Lord, today we exalt 
your name, knowing that you are with us and that your presence is with us already gives us so much peace. Lord, I pray that as believers and as your followers, we would learn how it is to put you at the center of everything else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as followers of Jesus, we are supposed to do good. But I have this question for all of us. What is our motivation in doing good? Is it just for ourselves so that we could be recognized? Of course, nobody says that, right? And say, you know, I'm doing good so that I could be recognized. But if we try to dig down deep inside, why do we do these things? Why is it that after we have experienced the grace of God, we're still, in a sense, mandated to continue on doing good works unto Him? Now today, as we head towards our work, I know you're going to do good things, or maybe you're heading towards your studies, or maybe you're just at home right now doing household chores or making sure that everything in the family is working out well. These are good works that you are supposed to do today. Now, my intention for all of us is to make sure that everything we do, that in everything that we do, Christ is exalted. That's what it means to be Christ-centered. Our focus for today is found, our text is found in Titus chapter 3, verses 3 to 7. And let me read this in the ESV version. It says here, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of our works, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord for us today. Now, this letter of Paul to Titus is more like an encouragement for the Christians back then to live separately from the immoral culture in Crete. He was trying to tell them, you don't have to live like the Cretans do. If they keep on doing evil, you should keep on doing good. But as we all do good, this is what Paul is kind of like hinting on, let us remind ourselves that it is all about Jesus, our Savior. We do good not to prove ourselves better, we do good not to make a name for ourselves, but we do good because this is what our Savior, Jesus Christ, has meant for us to do. What does it mean for us to put Christ in the center? Verse 3 says this, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions. Now it's good to note that Paul was trying to remind Titus that they were once like that that they were no better than the Cretans. In one of Paul's other letters in Galatians, he would tell them, how foolish are you guys that you started off in the spirit, but now you're continuing on in the flesh. First thing we ought to do as we put Christ in the center would be to always remind ourselves who we were. Who we were. That we were once like this. That it's only through Christ that we have been saved from our evil ways. Now, for us here today, has this been our life before? Yes, no matter how seemingly good our lives were, we were disobedient, we were foolish, we were slaves to sin. But the question for us now is that, does it feel like this is still our life today? Are we kind of like striving to put Christ in the center? The next thing we ought to do is to know what Jesus did for us. We remember, we remind ourselves that we were once like this, but then again, we are no longer like that. Because of what? Because of what Jesus did for us. We have to know what Jesus has done for us. We go back to what Jesus did for us. That's what verse 4 says. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy. In the middle of our sinfulness, in the middle of our being foolish, being disobedient towards God, what He showed us is His loving kindness. It says here also, let me repeat that again, but according to His own mercy. 
not because we were, you know, we're cute, we look like we deserve forgiveness, it, or maybe because we've done something good anyway. It's not like uh, we have not done anything. It's not like everything we've done is wrong or wrong, but there are some things we've done correctly, right? But it's not because of those, but because of the own mercy of God. By the washing of, of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through who? Through Jesus Christ. The loving kindness of our Savior appeared. That's what this text says. And not in the middle of our doing good, but while we were sinners. Now, we can do good because of Christ, nothing else. We can do good not because we are good, but because Christ is good. This is how we put Christ in the center. In every good thing you're going to do today, whether at work, whether in your relationships, or maybe with the people around you, I just want you to be reminded of this, that we're able to do this because the Holy Spirit empowers us, which we richly receive because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. So therefore, you are enabled to do good. You are supposed to do good, not so that we can get merit towards God, not so that we can earn salvation, but because He has done this good thing for us, died on the cross, has forgiven our sins, restored us back to the Father, now we can do something good. So remember this, okay? Remind ourselves of who we were, but then again, we're no longer that person because of what Jesus has done. And the last part is this in verse 7, so that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Living a Christ-centered life is not just about having a perspective of today. Today is not the most important thing, nor tomorrow. The most important thing is having a perspective of eternity. It's not just about the life that we have right now, but the life that is about to come. So what is good for us is that for us to be able to put Christ in the center is to live life with the perspective of eternity. My hope and my prayer is that Jesus will be exalted in your life today as you continue to think about the life that He has for you. You know, when you think about life in the perspective of eternity, yes, you may have a lot of concerns now, but because of what Jesus has done for you, you will eventually have the ultimate victory, which is the gift of eternal life. And when you realize that, it affects the way you follow Jesus today, the way you honor Him today, the way you live your life according to His standards. Eventually, what it comes to a place where it's no longer just about my standards anymore. It's no longer just about what I like or what I want or when I want it or when should I get it, but it now becomes about Jesus. That's how we live a Christ-centered life. We remind ourselves of who we were. We understand the finished work of Jesus on the cross. May we grow in it on a daily basis and we live life from the perspective of eternity. I want to take this time to pray for all of us today. Lord, thank you because we were once objects of your wrath. We were foolish. We were disobedient, Lord. We were struggling, God, to really just be able to obey you of, or have some form of godliness, Lord. But because of who you are, Lord, because of what you've done, it says in that word that you appeared, Lord, and showed us your loving kindness you forgave us. You died for us, Lord. And therefore, God, we can now have a renewed and a restored life. Lord, I even pray for those who are struggling, God, with their old selves. Old selves, Lord. Where it feels like they're still living the same way they used to live, Lord. Even if they have already received of your grace. I pray, God, that you would give them so much more of your grace. That even in your word, it says there that your grace is sufficient in our time of weakness. So we speak your grace and blessing to be upon them right now. May the work of Christ as what is preached in the gospel be forever alive in their hearts. Lord, I pray that in everything we're going to do today, every good thing we're going to do today, may, you give, may we give you back all the honor and the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's sing this song once again.
Cause there's no sin too great There's no pain too deep The cross declares it is done There's no shame too real That his love won't heal Forever the victory is won Forever the victory is won We declare Forever the victory is won Right before we go, I just want to read verse 7 once again. So that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Let me speak this word of blessing upon you. Lord, thank you for the justification. Lord, today we receive every inheritance that you have for us as heirs. And may we live our lives hopeful today, tomorrow, and for the rest of eternity. God bless you all, and I'll see you again next time.